Classification by companies. Let's look at a different way to classify documents drawing upon some of what was developed for the FlexiCapture for Invoices product, and that is the ability to match addresses from data in a data set. So we can get data, company data from an ERP system, bring it into a local data set, and use that for classification purposes. So we'll take a look first at a document definition that's already been built. So we'll open it up and we see there's a couple of capture fields that could be trained with field extraction training and a couple more fields here. So let's create a new section. And I'm just going to kind of reproduce what some of these setup steps were, just a few of them. So I'll go ahead and click on next and I don't need an image file, nor do I need a flexi layout. I'll just keep this the default name. The next thing we want to do is go to the datasets tab and we can now click setup and we can click use database of companies. And you can see all these different fields now that can be populated from an external database. So we can say our source is a database and then we've got this dialog that allows us using a wizard to make a connection to an external database via an ODBC connection. And once we make that connection, then we will filter um, the tables by schema. Then we'll select the database table that contains our data. And once we do that, we can map these fields from our data set fields for company matching to the similar fields in the database, right? So uh, we'll match the address and the zip and the company name and so forth. And if you've taken a look at our FlexiCapture for Invoices product, you'll already be familiar with these steps. They're really the same. So I'll just cancel out of here and uh, I'll delete that document section. And I'll go back to this one that's prepared. We'll take a closer look at it now. So if I click on View, for the variance here, we've already imported data from a database, an ERP system, an ODBC data source, and we've only imported five, just for the sake of a quick demonstration, five companies with company information, such as street and zip code and so forth. We also have the ability to allow operators to add records and allow operators to edit records. So those are some important capabilities and we'll look at that a little bit more. Also, we'll take a closer look over here at this group where we've got an ID field. This is actually a service field. So if I open this up very simply, we are mapping the service field to the data source flexible section variant ID. And that's our data set ID. And we also have a name field and we make that name field an index field. So it's a good practice. We can uh, see why a little bit later. And other than that, there's really nothing going on here, except there is a database match rule. So if I look at properties of my document section and I click on rules, I can see that there is a database check rule. And I'll open it up we are using the variant ID to store the record ID. And then we're just simply connecting to a data set and we select our data set. We just have the one variance data set. Then we add a field link and that field link is simply matching the variant name with the name field on the form. So this field without region here. And we are entering the value from the data set if the values are different. So this is something that uh, we go over in basic class uh, doing uh, database match rules, a uh, reverse database lookup, if you want to call it that. So I'll go ahead and click cancel and back out of here. And another thing that we can point out is that we've added a button here next to the name. And if we look at the properties of that button, we can see here that that is associated with the action uh, database lookup and that we've selected that very same 
database lookup rule, that database check rule, and we'll see that in action in a sec. Okay, so we'll just back out of the document definition. I won't save any changes that I made, and we'll go look at a working batch where there's images that have not yet been recognized. And before I recognize the document, I'm going to customize the view here so that the verification operator can actually see an index field value. And that'll make a lot of sense in a second. So I'm going to use this name field, and that's actually holding the name from the data set of the company that we match. So I'll apply and click on OK. Oh, we've already had a name field, so I would actually rename that in practice. Um, so let's go ahead and recognize these documents. And we can click Show Details and see the log file. And we can actually see that documents are being matched. Uh, ID is 9, the name is T. Van Left, and so forth. So these documents are being matched and we can see the results here behind the screen. And we can see everything has been matched. And we can open up one of these documents. The fields haven't been trained yet, but here we have our ID number from the data set and that name as a result of that database check rule. And so if I hadn't added this name one column, the verification operator wouldn't be able to see this data. They'd have to open up each document to see it. So this is really helpful. And if we scroll down, we can see the documents were, they don't have to be, but they happen to have been sorted already in an order. They came in in a certain order. So there's also a find button here. And you recall that we were allowing operators to actually edit or add records. So they certainly could do that. Click edit and make changes here. Maybe add some additional information if they've got some or uh, they could add a completely new record and that is going to make the data set more robust right it's going to add if there's a company that we, we need to match on a regular basis and it's not in our data set our verification operators can add it on the fly if you click that checkbox that allows them to add records another thing we can do here is actually do a search so if for some crazy reason this was a mismatch maybe you have two different companies that have really similar information, you could just start typing in that information like MOI matched Moinhos. And if I had several companies that started with MOI, if I had a really large data set, then I would see everything that matches MOI. And I would just enter this in with US addresses. Oftentimes with this technology, I'll just start typing in a zip code and I'll see everything from that zip code and that can be really handy. And if we are editing a record, um, we could add a little bit more information if there was any problem matching this company or if there's companies that are very similar. You can add more data. But in general, when you're bringing in data, it's not necessary that all fields were filled out. And you can kind of play with that to see what matches best. But uh, just keep in mind, you don't have to have perfectly filled out data with all the fields populated in order to use this technology. It's really exciting. It's a fast way to set up a classification project if you already have a database with all this good company information.